Hello everyone, I'm The Weather Dude, welcome back, and today we have another very interesting look, our fourth outlook for the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. Before we get started with the video though, if you guys have not already, please consider subscribing, it really does help my channel grow. I want to thank you guys so much for 2,000 subscribers, we've flown past and hopefully we can hit our next goal of 3,000 subscribers soon, and also to help this video reach more people, Please consider liking and sharing it as well, and let's get into the video now. So here we are with our fourth Atlantic hurricane season outlook for 2021. It's not just going to be an outlook, it's also going to be a discussion. Uh, we're going to be talking about different factors that could influence the season as well, so let's get right into it. Um, First of all, we have April, and as you can see, for this month, okay, even though it's May, April, it's still very important to talk about the hurricane season because we've had seen development in April before, believe it or not. We've seen development all the way back to January, all right, back in 2016. So April, we weren't a La Nina, but we're already starting to get out of that. We're actually in an inactive phase, as you'll see in a little bit. We had an update on that. Um, and June and August, June through August, I should say, as you can see, uh, point four would be like that that ENSO neutral kind of criteria. Um, here, again, you can see by the graph, we're basically going to be in that neutral zone, point of this, all the way through August or September, maybe even. Okay, so that's pretty much the entire hurricane season, most of it. All right, we still don't know what October could bring. Um, a lot of the models have been suggesting a uptick closer to the zero line and then falling back after that, but whether it gets back to a La Nina, that's still kind of undecided. Um, but as you can see, generally in that white zone, uh, we're going to be probably remaining in the NSO neutral, um, as that's where we are back to now. Remember, it's not just like the, the second it crosses in there, we're officially at neutral. No, it has to stay there, like you saw here, for a few months or a couple months for it to, you know, for it to officially hold true that it's actually a neutral and not just like a, a temporary up and down pattern. So, as you can see here, uh, we have reset to inactive as La Nina comes to an end. Okay, the 20, 2020 through 2021 La Nina has ended. Um... It was active since September of 2020, all right? And so, yeah, RIP La Nina, September 2020 through April 2021. So, again, means we're in a neutral pattern, inactive status. Um, there are currently no indications or El Nino or La Nina in the coming uh, several months. So, again, as you, as you can see here, this is an update from the uh, Borough Meteorology that we are now in an inactive phase. And you can also see this indicated by the uh, Southern Oscillation, the SOI, all right? See how our latest 30 day value is 0.7, right? If you read the text I put here, um, above 8 indicates La Nina and below 8 indicates El Nino. So if we were lower, all right, like down here, this would indicate potentially some El Nino conditions, right? And if we were like up here, like we were back in January, that would indicate La Nina. But now that we're in the middle, you know, that's what represents your ENSO neutral. So that's some other evidence that we have as well, our southern oscillation. So as you can see for April, a lot of the models were correct in having us in a neutral, right, uh, through April. And if we look through May, as you can see, we start retreating back. So when the bars go to the right, they retreat a little bit. That means that the uh, Nino 3-4 region is getting slightly warmer. All right, and you can see this through June. I mean, even one model is above the zero line at this point. That'd be the UKMO. Um, but still, in it, all the models are in the neutral phase still at this point. July, same thing. And of course, by August as well. So you can see the pattern here. Uh, a lot of people or a lot of the models do indicate that we are still in an ENSO neutral pattern. The only model that might indicate La Nina is the NOAA model. Again, because by American standards, um, 0.5 would be La Nina and not 0.8. Again, Australia and America are a little different with that. So what has changed? We have these sea surface temperature anomalies from uh, April 10th. Obviously, April 11th is today. I was recording this. Obviously, we don't have the data in yet for today. Now, if we look at the Atlantic... You can see that if you remember from the past couple of hurricane season videos I did, you remember that off the coast of Africa was a little cool spot. That is now kind of flipped, right? I mean, we're seeing close to, you know, one, two degrees Celsius above average. So that really changed. The MDR region really did change. And that's kind of concerning. Uh, even though we generally won't see activity there until like later in the hurricane season. All right, still the fact that it's warming up now is a little concerning. Uh, I'll give a zoomed in view of the Gulf and the Caribbean as well, but you can see the Gulf of Mexico is above average, and the Nino 3-4 region, right? It's blue, it is La Nina, but it's starting to uh, kind of fade 
a little bit, right? We even see some uh, neutral pockets, even a couple yellow pockets working their way in there. Our side is definitely a sign that we're flipping to an NSO neutral pattern potentially. All right, and here's your zoomed in view of the of the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. You can see the Gulf, I mean, we're seeing oranges and reds even starting to form. It was even in more intense than this uh, just a few days ago. Caribbean, slightly above average, although there are definitely a lot of neutral pockets in there, meaning water is just about average. Um, but there are some warmer spots in the Caribbean as well. East of the Lester Antilles and the Windward Islands, you can see some warmer water there as well. And also some areas off the uh, east coast of the United States, we're all seeing some warmer waters there as well. And there are a few spots that are a little cooler than average, but overall, the general trend is that we're warmer than average in terms of the water temperatures. And you can see, I like looking at this as the SST trend for the past seven days. Uh, and you can see that it's trended much warmer, all right, um, in the east tropical Atlantic, closer to Africa. Um, if we look at the Gulf of Mexico, that's also trended upward. Caribbean's pretty much, the green means it kind of stayed the same. Maybe some pockets warmed up a little bit. But also look at the Nino 3-4 region, right? We've also warmed up a little bit there as well. So that's a that's an indicator that we could be switching to more of a neutralized pattern there as well. Uh, if we zoom in here again, you can see Caribbean pretty much stayed the same. Maybe the southern parts of the Caribbean warmed up a little bit. Um, and then the Gulf, look at the Gulf of Mexico, especially Texas, Louisiana coastline. That's like the, like that, almost like that orangish brown kind of color. That's like really high on the graph. I know you can't really see the key. All right, but it is really high up there. Oranges and reds. Of course, our big indicators that we've warmed up over the past seven days. All right, and here's the Saharan air layer. Of course, there is still dry air over here. You just can't see it because of the clouds. But where there's no dry air is the Central Eastern Caribbean, really. All right, that's not obscured by clouds. That is pure, like you're seeing to the ocean right there. That is really a gap in the dry air. And the fact that we're seeing that in April is a little troubling of a sign as well. Also, some spots, I know it's also covered up by clouds, but there is also minimal amounts of dry air there in the eastern tropical Atlantic right now. And also, you're starting to see what happens this time of year. You're starting to see this area off the northern coast of South America start to open up. And eventually, this dry area is going gonna, is gonna to chew almost. Like it's going to flee to the north. But there's still a good chunk of dry air that's protecting us off of Florida's west coast, which is pretty, you know, pretty common. It's only April. You won't see activity out there for another couple of months or a few months. But closer to home, we still have a lot of dry air as well. But the fact that the Caribbean is start, it was starting to lose some of its dry air is very concerning, I would say. Now, if you haven't, I've showed this map a lot, in case you don't know what it is, this is basically like the con the convection, right? Those green areas, you get more tropical convection, and those um, brownish, reddish, orangish, whatever you want to call it, areas are more, you know, less convection, right? So you can see, so the 18th to the 25th of April, you can see increased convection, like darker greens, closer to home, where we generally do see activity this time of year, right? So like the southeast coast, the Gulf of Mexico, the northern Caribbean, and this is through April 18th to the 25th, and that's according to the GEFS model. If we also look 20th through the 27th, same exact model, same run, um, and you can see right there, still darker greens, increased convection all the way through the 27th. And if we look at the CFS model, uh, 25th through, of April through May 2nd, you can see pretty much the entire Atlantic Basin is having some kind of increased convection. Not as intense, but still increased convection, and that is definitely a troubling sign. All right, you look at the tropical cyclone heat potential, you can see a lot more green starting to build up in the Caribbean. Uh, via the Gulf Stream, we're starting to see some of this spill out into the Gulf of Mexico, although it's not quite doing so yet. We don't have quite have enough heat in the Gulf yet, but it's getting there. All right? And we actually do have a couple more weather company outlooks that they provide their own outlooks actually for the end of the video, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Um, Ensemble-based probabilities, again, there are two areas that they say that high development chances, of course, um, I don't think so. Because anyway, it's April, and National Hurricane Center hasn't put anything out on these, but it's a sign that, you know, where we're starting to see some development this time of year, I think that's why I wanted to show this graph, is because you, that's where you see development in April. It's either really farther south in the Caribbean and the Gulf, or it's subtropical development up here. So this graph, let this graph show you, like, where development can happen this time of year. All right? I think that's the main takeaway from this graph. Now, wind shear, the only reason the wind shear is very low over southern Florida right now is because we're having those thunderstorms coming on through. All right. Other than that, the wind shear is pretty much taking over. Like any of this red means un uh, unfavorable wind shear amounts, um, except in the northeastern corner of the Atlantic. That's where we're seeing some lower wind shear right now. Uh, there's more manageable wind shears as well. All right. So again, you can see that on the wind shear on this wind shear graphic as well from the past 24 hours. You can see up in the northern Atlantic, right, blues and greens, not as much shear. Uh, but other than that, pretty much the entire Atlantic basin is still coated with a decent amount of shear. So that is a good sign. But this can pretty much wither away at, at 
any given point in time. Another look at this year here, if you look at the Caribbean, again, we've been hovering around average, but we have been slightly above average for this year. Obviously, looking at those two graphs I just showed you, that is pretty evident. And if you look at the Tropical Atlantic, our latest read is right on the average line or just slightly below it. But again, you can see up and down, we've been hovering about, about the average line the past few months, as a matter of fact. So really, pretty much nothing. I mean, there is supposed to be a lot of shear out in the Tropical Atlantic this time of year anyway, so that's pretty normal, I would say. All right, so now... We get to the good part, right? We're, like, what are the companies starting to say? So I, I said how the Colorado State University, right, according to the accumulated cycle of energy, called for the best chance of an above-average season. Not extremely active, but an above-average season. And then I gave what their outlook would anticipate to be. But the Colorado State University actually did release their official April outlook. And I also included AccuWeather as well, as well as my updated forecast. All right, so here it is. So my updated forecast here is 16 to 19 inch storms. As you can see, it did go up a lot. Um, seven to nine hurricanes and two to four major hurricanes. CSU's official April outlook is 17 named storms, eight hurricanes and four major hurricanes. And AccuWeather's official outlook here is 16 to 20 named storms, uh, seven to 10 hurricanes, as well as three to five major hurricanes. So again, as you can see, a pretty above average season considering that the average is 12, 12 to 13 named storms, six hurricanes and three major hurricanes. I would say this is a, a not an extreme season, but it's it's definitely an above average season uh, from the looks of it as of right now. So that is it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for future upcoming videos. I am Do Other Dude signing off. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.